So solution chemistry three. Uh, in the previous video, we talked about different types of solutions, namely saturated versus unsaturated. And where saturated refers to a very specific concentration, the maximum amount that you can dissolve, there are any number of concentrations um, that can be considered unsaturated. And so what we wanna do now is look at specific quantitative measures of concentration. There are a bunch of different forms of concentration. Uh, the first one we're going to look at, probably the most common one in a first year chemistry course, is molarity. Uh, molarity stands for moles of solute per liter of solution. Um, that variable in there uh, on the top of that is the standard chemical uh, variable for number of moles. So what would the units be here then? Well, we have N in moles, we have volume in liters. So that would be moles per liter. Uh, the derived unit that we get by combining those two molarity is generally just given a simple capital M. So how would we work through that? Well, here's a question. It says, determine the molarity of 3.62 grams of potassium sulfate dissolved in enough water to make a 500 milliliter solution. Well, the first thing we're going to need to do is get our solute. So we're dissolving our solute, potassium sulfate, in water. We're going to need to get that solute from grams to moles. So you're going to need to find out a chemical formula, and you're going to need to sort out a molar mass. So go ahead and set up a game board, put your 3.62 grams of potassium sulfate in the top left, and then um, calculate that number of moles by using the molar mass. Go ahead and pause the video while you do that. So here's the game board set up, 3.62 grams of potassium sulfate in the top left, uh, 174.27 grams, uh, the formula for potassium sulfate K2SO4. Potassium ion is a one plus, the sulfate ion is a two minus. And if you uh, divide by that molar mass, you're gonna end up with 0 0.02077 moles. Now notice this should be three significant digits, but I've written down four here. Also notice I've underlined that third significant digit. The reason for this is I have a multi-step problem. I don't want to round off for sig digs until I get my final answer. So I'm always going to take one or two more significant digits than I need. I'm going to take those moles and divide them by the volume of the solution, but I need to make sure I convert that in milliliters into liters. Um, so it would be 0.500 uh, liters of solution. Uh, sorry, 0 0.5000. There should be three zeros there for sig digs. We're going to divide that out. We're going to change our unit from moles per liter into molarity or capital M. Round it for three sig digs. It should be 0 0.0415. And there we have the answer. So moles of solute per liter of solution. You just need to make sure you get things into the right units. Here's a problem reversing the process a little bit. So now we're given the concentration. We want to know how much starting material we're going to have to dissolve in order to get this solution. Uh, so again, take a second. See if you can set this problem up and work through it. Go ahead and pause the video while you do that. Okay, let's go over the answer together. So um, I like to start with an equation. So moles, uh, molarity, sorry, equals moles per liter. Uh, notice you're given both a molarity and a volume. The unknown then in this equation is going to be number of moles. Multiply both sides by that 10.5 liters, and you're going to get 26.25 moles. Again, notice I've taken one more digit than I need for sig digs because I'm not done with my calculation yet. So that gives me my moles of solute. The question is asking me how many grams of solute. If I want to make this solution, I don't have to weigh out some potassium hydroxide to do that. We often do this calculation in the lab um, when we want to figure out how to um, concoct a particular solution. We're going to work through to figure out how many grams we need to dissolve. We're going to weigh that out, and then we're going to dissolve it uh, or fill a container that has a, a fixed volume marking on it. We'll talk more about how to make solutions in the next video. But right now, go ahead and take that moles of potassium hydroxide and convert that to grams of potassium hydroxide using a molar mass. If you didn't get that far before, go ahead and pause the video again while you do the mole to gram conversion. 
So here's your game board, 26.25 moles times the molar mass is 56.11 grams. I'm gonna multiply across there. We're gonna find it's gonna take just shy of one and a half kilograms of potassium hydroxide to make this solution. Okay, let's look at another form of concentration and it's called molality. Uh, there is some nearly annoying similarity between the two terms, molarity and molality. Um, so you're going to have to try and keep them straight there. Symbol for molarity is the capital M. The symbol for molality is a lowercase italicized or cursive M. Um, and it is going to be moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. So why would we need different forms of concentration? Um, well, there are a lot of different reasons. Uh, one might have to do with what instrumentation you have available. Um, is it easier to measure out the total volume of your solution, or is it easier to measure out how much solvent um, you are adding? So instrumentation is going to matter. Type of solution, whether it's um, a gas in a liquid or a solid in a liquid. Um, industry. Um, different um, industries tend to favor particular forms of concentration. But let's uh, explore molality a little bit here. Um, the units for molality again, are going to be moles per kilogram, that's solute over solvent, um, and they um, combine to form that um, unit with the um, italicized M. This says determine the molarity. Oh, sorry, it doesn't say it until I push the button. So uh, problem here says determine the molarity of 3.62 grams of potassium sulfate dissolved in 450 grams of water. And so... Um, this problem very similar to the last problem, except this time we're given a mass of solvent instead of a volume of solution. Our first step there is then to find the number of moles of potassium sulfate. And since it's the same number of grams, we already know from the last problem that that was 0 0.02077 moles. Again, taking one more significant digit than I need. We're going to divide that by kilograms of solvent. So we have to take that 450 grams, convert it to kilograms. We're going to divide those two out, round that to three sig digs, and this would be described as a 0 0.0462 molal solution. So that's molality. All right, let's look at another uh, form of concentration, um, mole fractions. So mole fractions are going to be the ratio of the moles of a component of a solution, so that's N sub A. So you have two different substances mixed here together, substance A and substance B. So we're going to take the moles of substance A divided by the total number of moles of particles in the solution. Again, why would you want mole fractions? There are a bunch of different reasons. Um, gases, for instance, where their volumes, so if you have a mixture of two gases, um, their volumes are dependent on temperature and pressure, so it might be more useful to measure their concentration in terms of moles um, when volumes of gases will change under different conditions. Let's talk about units real quick. Well, what are the units for mole fractions? Well, the units for mole fractions are nothing because it's moles divided by moles. So here's another uh, problem you can look at that will uh, use mole fractions. So we want to know the mole fraction of 9.20 grams of strontium chloride dissolved in 98.0 grams of methanol. So both of those are given in grams, of course, because it would be easier to weigh them out in grams in the lab. But if we want a mole fraction here, we're then going to have to convert them to moles. So you need a chemical formula for strontium chloride, um, and you'll need a chemical formula for methanol, which is actually provided for you there. Then you're going to need to set the game boards up in order to calculate the number of moles. So here is the game board set up for that conversion from strontium chloride grams to moles. Um, and you should get 0 0.05804 moles. Again, notice I'm taking one more sig significant digit than I need there. Uh, we then can convert methanol um, to moles. Here's the game board set up for that. Um, you have the mass of methanol divided by the molar mass. And that gives us 3.0577 moles um, for a uh, number of moles of methanol. Mole fractions then are part over the whole. So the total amount of moles is going to be 
those two number of moles combined. And then if we want to find the mole fraction of strontium chloride, um, we're going to set up the number of moles of strontium chloride divided by the total moles um, in the mixture. Uh, you should get 0 0.0186. I'm around that for three significant digits. Both of those terms have three significant digits in them. And so that would be my mole fraction of strontium chloride. Uh, I can do the same thing for uh, methanol with the moles of methanol on the top. So if we're looking back at that original formula, what we would do is change that top part to be N sub B um, is equal to, or divided by, sorry, NA plus NB would give us the mole fraction of methanol. And so when you do that calculation, you end up with 0.981. Um, and then, of course, since these are our two components and we add two fractions um, together in a two-component mixture, we would expect that those two things would add up to be uh, one. And of course, if we add them up and round for sig digs, we certainly would get one there. Um, sometimes it might be a little over, might be a little uh, under because of sig digs, but it ought to be pretty close. And if you have three components in a mixture, then the sum of those three mole fra fractions should equal one. Um, oftentimes students will ask me, well, can I just find the first one and then subtract from one? You can, um, but if you crack, uh, calculated that first one incorrectly, then the second one is going to be wrong too. It's a better plan to calculate both mole fractions independently. Make sure that they equal one because that gives you a check to make sure you've done um, each of the parts of the mixture correctly. Okay, so there's one more uh, type of concentration that we want to look at, and that is um, different forms of percent compositions. Again, percent compositions are parts over the whole, so they're going to be amount of solute over um, amount of solution. And there are two different ones we're going to look at, the M over M, which is mass of solute over mass of solution times 100%. Um, or volume over volume. So volume of solute over volume of solution times 100%. It doesn't matter what unit you use as long as the top and the bottom are the same. So if you're doing grams of solute, you should do grams of solution. If you're doing pounds of solute, you should do pounds of solution. If you're doing gallon, gallons of sol solute, you should do gallons of solution in that volume calculation. So here's an example of one of those. Determine the percent by volume of a solution made by mixing 35 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide with 2.000 liters of water. So again, it's going to be part over the whole. So we have 35 milliliters of solute, that's the hydrogen peroxide, and we're dissolving that in um, two liters of water. So the total volume of our solution is going to be those two things added together. So you have two options here. You can convert your hydrogen peroxide to liters um, and then uh, divide your um, solute and solution, or you can convert your solution to milliliters and do the division. So I set it up with milliliters. Again, notice I took my 2,000 milliliters or two liters, and I added that 35 milliliters of solvent to that. Um, and so that's where I get the ratio there. You're going to divide those out and you're going to multiply by 100. You don't have to hit the percent key on your calculator. That will actually divide it by 100 again. Um, that percent there is just essentially going to be our unit. And so when we divide that out, we get 1.72%. And if you're doing a volume concentration, then in parentheses you put V over V. If we were doing a mass percentage calculation, we would do M over M. Um, there are fair bit of um, common um, percent solutions that you run into. Uh, the hydrogen peroxide solution, of course, um, you buy um, hydrogen peroxide at the drugstore, at Target, Walmart, wherever you're going, um, based on a percent concentration. Uh, rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol that you would put on a cut um, also can be bought in a bunch of different percent solutions. So notice these all have different percentages on them, 91, 70, 50. Um, convenient that Walgreens there seems to recognize that we do need to specify whether that's by mass or by volume, although when you have a liquid solution, by volume is usually um, assumed. So that's how we calculate 
uh, solutions. Um, you'll want to have all of those different equations handy. So if you didn't kind of take notes as you were going through this one, you're going to want to go back through the video and you're going to want to jot down all of the specific equations for um, percent composition, or sorry, for concentrations of solutions.